everyone in Centerpoint, welcome to church. Welcome those that are coming for the first time to see a few beautiful faces over here. Um, this morning we're going to worship our amazing God. So if you want to do whatever it is, jump around, stand, whatever you want to do this morning, let's worship him together.
remain standing. The ushers are just going to slowly um, give you the communion this morning. We're going to take it all collectively in, in just a moment. But this song that we're singing, wow, wow. These lyrics, these words, they're not just words. They're actually tools. They're tools for our life. Worship is a weapon. You know, when Jesus died for us and he bridged the gap for us to now be in relationship with God, he promised us a relationship with God and a life, but not that it was all going to be rosy. We're actually going to face trials and tribulations. But how do we get through those trials and tribulations? Through worship, with the tool that he gave to us that is above the and you know what? Even in the good down. times, we should be worshipping. It's a weapon. Spin. It cleanses our mind. Worship cleanses our mind. They're not just lyrics on a page. We're declaring the promises of God. There's worship songs that talk about how Jesus died on the cross for us and why he died. For many years, I never knew why Jesus died. For many years, I knew he died, but I didn't know he died for me. And when I heard that for the first time, I was in awe, but I was also a little upset because I felt robbed that no one had told me for 18 years of my life why Jesus died. And there's one thing you will hear here, and that is the gospel, the truth. And we love to declare the life of Jesus Christ. We love to talk about his life. We love to talk about our God and how he loved us so much that he sent us his son. And Jesus came, and this always blows my mind, Jesus came willingly knowing the road that was before him. It wasn't, it wasn't, oh yeah, I'll go. No, he came, he knew the Old Testament. He came, he knew what was going to happen to him. He knew that he was going to be ridiculed. He knew that he was going to be beaten. He knew that he was going to be spat on, that his beard was going to be torn out of his face, but he came. He came for you and me. He came so that we could have a relationship with God. So when you're having trials, when you're having a good day, bad day, whatever, raise a hand. Hallelujah. Raise a hand. Open your Bible and just thank God. Not, don't let a day go by where you don't say, thank you, God. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. And start worshipping. Start reading. Worship is, is found in many different forms. But remember that it's your weapon. Worship is your weapon. And I'm so honoured to have the team back up here this week and leading us into a time of worship. So you've all got your cups. Let's together take the body of Christ that was broken for us, that body that was whipped and beaten. I know it's gruesome and some people don't like to talk about it, but it happened. It's real. And he bore stripes for us, for our healing and for our relationship. And also take the juice that represents the blood of Jesus that is still afresh on the mercy seat in heaven today. It's still powerful. The blood of Jesus is still powerful and can be applied to your life in any situation that you have. Amen. Lord, we love you and we just want to thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you that you were so, so selfless and you sacrificed your son so that we now can have an amazing life. And you are with us in the good, in the bad, in the medium, in the ordinary. Whatever it is, you are there. So this morning, we raise a hallelujah to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.
what a moment of worship this morning. You know, in an ever-changing world, this world is always changing, but you know God remains the same. And you know how powerful His promises are for us? It's just awesome. What a morning. What a way to kick off Feb, hey? We had an amazing message from Pastor Trish, amazing communi- communion message from Pastor Trish. We are ready. The band is back is, and ready. They are refreshed from their summer break. And we're going to get straight into it this morning. So good morning and welcome to Centre Point Church <laughs> after all that. If this is your first time here this morning, or if you are sitting next to someone who may be a little bit shy, can I please ask you to raise your hand? Because our amazing host team would love to give you a little gift. Oh, one in the front over here. That's, I can see a pretty face. <laughs> and please, and over there as well. I see your pretty face too. Well done. Welcome. Please don't feel like you need to run away after service. We would love for you to hang around, grab a coffee in the foyer because we would love to meet you. All right. I'm going to get straight into it this morning. We have some key dates for you guys. And I cannot see the font over there. So I'm going to turn around <laughs> because my eyes are really bad. Key dates. Feb 5th today is Vision Sunday. We are going to be be prepared to hear an awesome message about that this morning. Feb 12th. So next Sunday, can everyone say next Sunday? We have the awesome Pastor Gary Hurrigan in the house. And can I tell you, we are in for a treat because this man can preach. This man can preach. And every time we hear him, my husband, Joe Tyne, walks away going, wow, I just love Pastor Gary. (laughs) He blows our mind. All right, March. Connect groups are starting in March. Now, if you are yet to join a Connect group, can I please encourage you to do so because it is such a pivotal part of your spiritual growth. It is an opportunity to gather with your church family outside of a Sunday where you come together for prayer, for support, and of course, Bible study where you learn about our amazing Jesus. You can register for a Connect group online via our CPC website and we will help find a group that's right for you. By the end of the year, you'll be so connected, you'll have more connections in a PowerPoint. There you go. Gee, I like that one. You can take the girl out of Faulkner. (laughs) Okay, next, sorry. We have Grow Kids starting up in, yes, next Sunday, Grow Kids starts up. Don't forget kids, it's gonna be an amazing, exciting year of learning about our amazing Jesus. And also youth is going to start up by the end of the month as well. So put that one in your calendar. You don't wanna miss out on that one. If you have teenagers, please encourage them to come along to youth. It is so pivotal in their growth as well. Alrighty, we have Bible College. Yes, CPC Bible College. That kicks off on the 7th of March at 7.15. Okay, I think it's a Tuesday night. If you feel like you want to take your Bible studies to the next level, if you want to grow on that, can I please encourage you to register for CPC Bible College. You are going to come out with a wealth of information and you're going to blow people's minds, my friends. I'm excited for that one. All right, that is all from me this morning. You have been amazing as always. Can I please get you to give a big warm welcome to the amazing Pastor Dom Gallo, who will be bringing you this morning's Offering Thoughts. He is awesome. Look at his hairstyle today. It's grouse. Woo! Oh, yeah. Well, I have the privilege of having both. But uh, how do you follow Connie? Seriously, such energy. Uh, But uh, that's the way we want to start your week. This is the uh, first day of the week. If you are a born-again believing trusting Christian, then this is the day that sets you up. So it's awesome to be in the house of God. Um, No claps, no yes. What's going on? I'm pretty sure everyone woke up at least at least 35 minutes ago. Um, So, you know, be ready to be in the house of the Lord. Today is an amazing day. It is Vision Vision Sunday. It is the day pivotal to our year, pivotal to what we're all on about. Uh, But uh, I'm here, I've been asked to give some thoughts on offering. Um, The current ways to give are on the screen behind me. Last time I looked, yes they are, they still are there. Um, So whilst they are up, we have the amazing ushers. You've got envelopes on your seat. If you need a pen, they have pens for you. They will also, after that, pass around the buckets and feel free to uh, put your uh, offering in there. If you're a guest today, we are a church that believes in giving to God. Please don't feel obligated. 
I will love for you to give to God. I do not want to steal that opportunity away from you. But please don't feel obligated. It is something that we do and we believe in. And that's what I'm going to talk about. But as an intermission to what I'm going to talk about, there is a missions trip this year. Cooler and I, my wife, are going to the Philippines. What I would like, if you can help me out, as much as I have to inquire at the, real, at the uh, agents to get dates and tickets, I need numbers. I need to know who, yes, I can see, I can see, I can see. Some of you I haven't got back to you. And it's because I went into flight center, walked in, there was a massive board and it said, make an appointment. Things have changed. It's not like it used to be. So if you are interested, if you want to find out what we're doing, how we're doing it, when we're doing it, get a hold of Cooler and myself um, or Pastor Trish, Pastor John. They'll refer you back to us. But, um, and we'll be able to get some numbers and get some key dates and figures for everyone that's uh, interested uh, and that would help us a great great deal so that was my intermission let's get to what we're really here about um, I'm definitely getting older I tried to get my iPad going because this is getting smaller um, and it's just not working for me but um, definitely, definitely getting older. you can see that by my white hair being older, I will be reading from the Old Testament and then because this is a new church, I'll read from the New Testament uh, just to keep it in check. But I would like to talk about seeding. Uh, I've had some time off. Every time I have some time off, I get myself back in the garden and I just feel that that's where God talks to me. It's just so strange because when I was little, I went nowhere near the garden. I never helped my parents, never helped my dad and now I'm just always in the garden. And I just find God's got a place for me. Genesis 1, 11 and 12. If you've got your Bibles, please read along. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit and seed in it according to their various kinds. It was so. And the land produced vegetation, plant bearing seeds according to their kind and these trees bearing, fr trees bearing fruit with a seed in it according to their kind and God saw that and it was good now Mark 4.26 he also said this is what the kingdom of God is like a man scatters seed on the ground the night and day whether he sleeps or gets up the seed sprouts and grows though he does not know how all by itself in the soil producing grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. Why am I choosing these two scriptures? Because, as I said before, I believe, the leadership believe in planting seed. When I talk about seed, I'm talking about my offering. I'm talking about what I'm planting in the place I call home. This house is where I call home. So when I believe in something, like I believe in my household, the Gallo household, I do my best to care for the plants. I do my best to plant around the property. I do my best to care for it. I do my best to allow it to produce. I make sure that I water it. I make sure I learn about it. And then there'll be a harvest. And I know that my God will allow for a harvest whether I do my job or not, because he's a miracle working God and he is the one in control. I'm only doing the work. There's some simple sections in those verses. I know it says, and that you don't know how, and scientists may know how to now, but at the end of the day, we actually don't. Because whether we're there or not, plants still grow. They'll grow in the middle of the desert. They'll grow where you do not know, but they will grow because God will produce and will reap a harvest 
whether you till the ground or not. So my thing is I want to be part of the journey. I want to be part of the process. And God's about plans and purposes. So what I would pray for everyone in this house is that you plan. This year is a new year. It's 23. 22 is gone. 23 is here. This is Vision Sunday. So I would like to ask you guys to stand up, if I may. Now, I want this church this year to be a church of participation. I do not want to come to church, sit in a seat, go home, and have had no effect connection to this place. I want to make sure that the, the time that I spend here, I am connected Not only to God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, but to the people around me. So I want to pray for you, but I want you to pray with me. Can I ask you to believe and to declare today that 2023 is your year of seeding, is your year of watering, is your year of harvest. God will bring forward a harvest. And don't tell me there's someone in here that does not need a new job that does not need a career change, that does not need a blessing, that does not need a healing, that does not need things to change, that does not need their circumstances to be better. We all need these things. I need these things. And for me, I know that they've started. But what I'm saying to you guys is, let's raise our hands so I can pray and believe. And I'm asking you to declare before God, heaven and earth and your family that things will happen this year, this day, that are going to change the course of this year. That is a vision. This is the vision you need, I need, my family needs. This is generation. We sang a song. He's the God of the generations. He's the God of hope. He's the God that split the seas. He's the God that bore where nothing was born. Please believe in the God that you worship, that you raise your hands to. Raise your hands today, and I will pray for you today that Jesus is not only coming back, but he's coming back for you. Come back for your family. Declare before heaven and earth that Jesus is your saviour, your living hope, your joy, your peace, your everything. In Jesus' name, Father God, we believe that this church, Centre Point Church, everyone that's in this building, declare before heaven and earth that He is our hope. He is our generational blessing. Father God, we need your blessing over our children. We need our blessing in this house over the community, out of everyone that's around us. We need it over our families. We declare the power of your Holy Spirit, your blessings of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Father God, we need it in our marriages. We need it in our relationships. We need it in our place of work. Father God, set aside 2023 as the year that CPC's children, members, acquaintances, Enemies are blessed by it being here, are blessed by the people in it, are blessed by the people that come and worship in this house. Bless them, Father. May your spirit outpour and pour and pour out. May it be a spirit, may it be a blessing in their lives this year more than any year. Make this year be a change. Make it be all that it should be, can be, and will be, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and agree. Amen. You can sit down. And in doing that, oh, yeah, did you bring the buckets around? We'll bring the buckets around. Buckets are going around. And while the buckets are around, I have the honour of introducing our senior pastor who's going to bring us today's message for Vision Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Dom. Now we can all go home. We heard the vision. I can preach something else now. Amazing. That was the Holy Spirit. Thank you, guys. Come on, let's give it up for these amazing people. Let me just put that in front of me. So good having uh, live worship. And uh, I was so excited coming back uh, here. And the other reason why I was so excited to see you, some of you we haven't seen, uh, January's been that kind of 
uh, year we've had this year. The, the sun has been good. It's been good to some of us anyway. Uh, but uh, a lot of people have gone away and uh, enjoyed their time. And my prayer is, is that January is that time of refreshing, uh, kind of like, I guess, resetting, uh, thinking. It's a time you can read a book. Uh, it's a time we can read the Word of God. Um, most most gen- times in January, I get to do my most reading. So I'm excited about that, but I'm more excited about the house of God. I'm more excited about you being the church. You are the house. This is the temple where God dwells. Uh, New Testament, God dwells in you. And uh, he'll never leave us or forsake us. That means you're taking him wherever you go. And if I'm taking God wherever I, I am, let me tell you, there's going to be a change. And you need to believe that in 2023, that in you, God is going to change the atmosphere outside of you. I really believe that in 2023. And uh, again, like I said, thank you for being here today. If you are here for the first time, we've got a beautiful friend of ours that come all the way to Italy to hear Vision Sunday. That's amazing. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> all the way from, is it Milano? Where are you from? Milano. Mate, that's where all the best dress, Brescia. There, I don't know where Brescia is, but I know where Milano is. Near Milano. That's where all the, uh, the beautiful clothing comes from, Luana. Amazing. So we're going to get there one day, take my wife to Milano and uh, get all her bags and dresses that she doesn't wear, but she wears uh, other clothing. Let's just pray. Father God, we just thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, that as we've said, you never leave us or forsake us. In fact, you are waiting here for us. Your presence is where people's praises are. And Lord, this morning we've praised you. Lord, we've praised you with our lips, but Lord, right now, we want to praise you in our hearts. Lord, this morning, we want to open up our hearts to what you have for us as your church, Center Point Church, as your body, Lord, here and in Melton and in the Philippines. God, we just ask, God, that today, as you speak to us, God, that we will be excited, knowing that, Lord, we play an integral part until you return. We play an integral part in leading people to Jesus and introducing them to your love. Father, I pray for every man, woman, family, child here today, those who aren't here, those that are a part of, Lord, this church, a blessing as Dom's already blessed and prayed. Lord, I join with Pastor Dom's prayer, a blessing, a generational blessing over the lives of our church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Let me just have a quick swig. We may go a little longer today. Uh, that's because I haven't preached for four weeks. No, it's, it's, it is Vision Sunday, probably that too. Uh, but we just want to get through some stuff today. Is that okay? Because uh, this is important. Come on, this will set us for 2023, our focus. It's going to set our focus as a church. Now, as individuals, we have our relationship with God Please continue to live that. But then when we come together, how many know that there's a blessing when there's unity? God commands a blessing when we're united in what we do as a church, as the body. No good doing life on your own. Often hear people saying, I don't need to come to church. I'm a Christian. Well, no, you're an, you're an island to yourself and it's dangerous. I've seen people who are on their own. It's dangerous. No, no support and prayer. No people around them. No people sharpening them. You know, the Word of God, when we speak to one another and fellowship one with another, the Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ, Son, cleanses us from all sin. So unity is important. Amen? Amen. So as you would know, we're, we're in an age that is crazy. It's a crazy age. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But also regarding our evangelistic strategy, I think we're in trouble when it comes to our strategy, because we're seeing pastors and churches that are trying to make relatable the goal. We've got to be relatable. We've got to be relatable. And what happens is, is that we think that being relatable is the formula to become relational. That's the fallacy, but it's not the, the reality. The reality is that when we make relatability the goal, or we make it the focus, because we think that's going to make us relational, this is what happens. What happens is, is sometimes, in doing that, we excuse people's status. 
Oh, because they're this person, they're that person. And also, we tolerate bad behavior, wrong behavior. And we call it God's grace. We call it God's love. But the fact of the matter is, is that does not address a person's soul. Jesus Christ, as we heard from Pastor Trish, came to die for our soul, to give life to the soul. And being relatable and relational is not the goal. It's us knowing God. It's us being introduced to God. So I guess this is a frustration for me, that the real, true, authentic, pure gospel of Jesus Christ is not enough for the Australian church. See, I don't read in the Bible where Jesus and his disciples frequented bars just to go and be cool and to get drunk so they could relate to those people. Nor do I see them going to gambling dens with a tax collector to get on the level. Hear my heart here. Hear my heart. Instead, the Bible says, and we see grown men. Now picture this, a grown man climbing a tree just to see Jesus. Climbing a tree just to see Jesus, not because Jesus was relational, or relatable, because he was righteous, because he was holy, because he was loving, and because he was good. You know, a popular argument right now against us as Christians is we're not loving. We don't accept certain things. We're narrow-minded, and we're backward. Well, here's the whole irony about this love and acceptance movement, and I put it in inverted commas, is that It's only love and acceptance if I believe what you believe. But yet, you can mock what I believe. That's the love and acceptance movement. Here's what the world doesn't understand. God's love is available to everybody and anybody. But his love doesn't have to agree with your life. That's not hating who you are. That's just not agreeing with some of the life choices or decisions that you make. It's hypocritical to say that I have to agree with you and yet you don't have to agree with how I live. That's hypocritical. But yet this is the movement. And if we can't love each other through disagreements, then we're not looking to love one another, but rather we're looking to control and manipulate one another. Absolutely. Now here's the thing. And again, I'm just bringing some basic stuff, and it's the Word of God, because we've got to get that foundation right, hey? And the reality is, is when it comes to God's ways versus the world's ways, His perspective on life is different. It's different because there's a thing called truth. And the truth sometimes is hard-hitting. It is hard-hitting. Let me tell you, I've had 33-odd years of being beaten up by the Word of God. You won't hear that with some preachers. And on the screen, we're going to have a look at some of the things that the world call, what the world calls life and what, what God in His Word calls life. We're going to put that up right now. Here's the thing. It's not an affair. It's adultery. It's not safe sex. It's fornication. It's not gay love. It's sodomy. It's not alcoholism, it's drunkenness. It's not pro-choice, it's murder. It's not a fib, it's a lie. But hey, pastor, aren't you being old-fashioned? No, I've just fashioned my life to the truth. Can I tell you, that fashion never goes out of style because the truth is what sets you free. It's the truth. And we as a church, we need to follow the truth. We just got to stop trivializing sin and repent of it. Come on, I've repented of sin. It doesn't make me an evil person. It just makes me a person that's not following the truth. And the reality is, is we trivialize sin and we try and brush it over with the grace of God. But the grace of God has come to set us free. The grace of God has come to li- uh, allow us to live the truth. He who has the Son is free. And he who has Jesus is free indeed. And this morning, I just want us to understand that as a church, we don't need to be a church that sounds and looks like the world. There's plenty of them even around us here today. We need to be a church that lives and speaks the Word of God. Lives and speaks 
I know there's a lot of people that speak it, but lives and speaks, faith and works. It goes hand in hand. Let's not just be preaching about it. Come on, it's the love of God in action. Jesus said, he, God said that he so loved the world. He said it, and what did he do? Action, he sent his son. And we as the church need to live and speak the word of God. It's the word of God that's alive. It's the word of God that's active. It's the word of God that's able to reach the hardest hearts. You've got some people that have hard hearts. Maybe you've got a hard heart today. Let me tell you, what you're trying is not working. But allow the word of God to permeate your heart. Read the word of God. Because that's what can breathe into a a soul that's dead and bring it to life. You know what? Soul life is about transformation. Behavior is just about justification of the way we live. And God wants to transform your soul so that you don't even need to concern yourself about your behavior because your belief system will change the way that you live. You don't have to put controls out there. There's so many people putting us controls, taken up by controls. That's called the law. The reality is, is if you just have the word of God in your life and follow the truth, it will set you free. As a church, we need to pursue the gift of knowing God and what he has for us. Because what he has planned for you is a result of why he created you. And the reality is, is he created you to know him. This is the truth that will set you free. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you what's dangerous to the devil right now? The truth. What's that look like? Here it is. You don't have to go to Bible college for this. The enemy is absolutely crapping his pants when you know the truth. And this is what it looks like. It's when a child of God knows they are loved by God. When you know that 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 you know you you are loved by God, the enemy, I don't have hair because I'd do it, maybe Dom's beard, the enemy (laughs) runs all the way to the toilet and sends faxes to Werribee (laughs) because he is scared. Because he knows that person has found the truth, the love of God. And let me tell you, it's when you know the truth to the extent that you realize you have nothing to prove. So you don't have to post stuff to prove stuff. You know how we post stuff to prove stuff, to hide behind, to show people. The influencers show how real they are. Absolutely hogwash we hide behind instagram but when you're a child of god you don't have to post stuff to validate what you believe when you know the truth of who you are in jesus it's in jesus everybody say in jesus opinions of this world opinions of this world don't validate you anymore all they do is confirm what you already know you already know that You don't have to uh, listen to the opinions. But sadly, many Christians are living off a poor diet. And you know what this poor diet's made of? Opinions. We're carrying spiritual kilos. We're eating up all these opinions of what people are saying about us. And and we're putting weight on. We're carrying this weight and it's bringing us down so much so that that we're finding our soul is tired. I can't do this anymore. This is too hard. Why? Because you're listening to the opinions out there. Instead of being in Jesus, having the truth that's in you, listening to the Holy Spirit. Because when we listen to him, he'll tell us, Hey, John, if you are heavy laden, go to Jesus and and give him what you're you're carrying because he's going to give you rest. But no, I've got to go and find opinions of others. And I just carry these kilos in my life and I'm feeling tired, lethargic. Have you ever felt lethargic? I did last night. I had some souvlaki and these chips. It was amazing. My wife had gone and looked after one of my granddaughters or our granddaughter. And uh, she said, you're on your own, mate. Yeah, okay. So I went for a walk. I did my losing kilos first. And then I got a double banger. 
And these chips, they were absolutely amazing, let me tell you. And then I felt lethargic. I'm going to go to bed. It was only 7 o'clock. That's, that's, but what do we do as Christians? We go out there and we start eating opinions that aren't lined up with the Word of God. And we get heavy because we listen to them with all of our insecurities, with all of our anxieties, with, I better listen to that and this hasn't been working, so I'll listen out there. We're, we're, we're looking, we're listening, we're playing in a field that is not for you. You're born again of the Spirit of God. Know you not that you are a new creation. You are in Christ Jesus now. The world no longer has a hold of you. So stop taking news from a place that doesn't speak to you or or is not for you. It's like taking a Ford to a Volkswagen factory. It just doesn't work. They'll tell you they can do it. They'll tell you that they're universal. But you know what? Your car might be going backwards rather than forwards. So we're becoming lethargic. And our faith in the fast food approvals doesn't sustain us. I've been there. It doesn't sustain you. The only thing that's sustainable is God's word. It's the only thing. And my question to you, to us as a church in 2023, if you know what God says about you, if you know what God thinks about you, why are you giving that up for the opinions of someone else who didn't make you, form you, knit you, call you, bleed for you, die for you? And guess what? And now he's given you his spirit until he returns. No one's going to do that for you. No opinion. No advice. But the one who died and was crucified and gave us his Holy Spirit to lead us for the rest of our lives. You know what? Jesus said that there's coming a day, and I'm telling you we're in it. There's coming a day that deception is going to be so rampant that if possible, even the elect are going to be deceived. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to know how to be deceived proof. Do you? Does anyone else? I want to know how to be deceived proof because I don't want to be deceived. But you know what? I'm a bit of a simple guy and I kind of like doing math and I know that one plus one equals two, so I passed grade one. So I'm thinking myself, truth and me. Here's truth, the word of God, Jesus himself, because he's the truth, the life, the way, and he's me. So when I read Christ in us, so do you think if truth comes inside of me, that will equal you won't be deceived? I think so. Because how can you be deceived if the truth is in you? It says, don't be deceived. And this is what James says. James 1, 16 and 17 says this, don't be deceived, brothers and sisters, Whatever, everybody say whatever, whatever is good and perfect is, everybody say is, is a gift coming down from us, from the Father who created all lights in heaven. In him there is no variation for he is perfect and never changes. Here's the thing, James what are you saying? That's amazing but what are you saying? What does that, what does that mean? James is saying, If you get the truth in you, you will never, never, never be deceived. That's the word of God. Don't be deceived. And how? Because if the truth is in us, we won't be deceived. What truth? What truth is he talking about? Listen to this. There is nothing good for you outside of God. That's the truth. Because if God, if if whatever's good comes from God, whatever is perfect is a gift to you. So anything outside of that, what is it? It's not good for you. It's not good for this spiritual life. It's not good for your plans and purposes that God has for us. And let me tell you, it's that simple, but yet we think, no, there's more. There's got to be more to that. There's got to be more to it. No, the truth is that anything outside of God that you're doing, that you're investing in, that you're looking towards is not good for this soul. It might be good for your flesh. It might be good maybe for some plans that you have for your family. It's temporary. But for the eternal stuff that we're talking about, because that's what I'm here for, I'm here for eternity. Because otherwise, if I'm just living for temporary life right now, I'm going to get disappointed because I've had some, you know, I've had some... uh, Some results that aren't favoring me at the moment. So that's temporary. Some people don't only last 20, 30 years. That's temporary. And if you aren't living for eternity, church, in 2023, if we're not living for eternity, then we're going to be disappointed. The reality is, is this is what 
James is saying. See, in a time where proving our identity is so prevalent and stating our status is promoted, we need to know that our identity is in Jesus. Our kids need to know that their identity is in Jesus. As a church, our focus is to encourage one another. We need to encourage people to look to Jesus, knowing that our life is hid in Him. And our new existence as a new creation is, in the, is alive and well in the life of Jesus Christ. Our life is in. Our life is in. In 2023, we need to remind ourselves, my life is hid. My life is in. I'm a new creation. I'm born again. In. I have the life of Christ. I have the Holy Spirit. I live in Him. Now, I'm not being melodramatic. My wife says sometimes I am. When I say that in 2023, we need to do everything in our breath to, pray, to play a prophetic role, meaning encourage one another. And we need to uh, practice, meaning we need to serve one another, participate each other, our generations here. We need to do that, the reason why, so we can live our Monday to Saturday in community. We need to get around one another. We need to encourage one another so that we can live out in community. Here's some sobering data that, as I was preparing this in January, came across me. And it's uh, relating to our next generation, which, as I mentioned this year, we are heavily going to uh, be involved in. It's from a pastor I follow in the US, but it also relates to us here in Australia because what we're talking about is not an American trend, it's a global trend. What we're talking about is global trend. So I've taken the percentages that, uh, that he speaks about in America and I've placed them onto our Australian population numbers, okay? So the percentages are the same, just the numbers are different. Here's the thing. 60% of Gen Z will walk away from the church. Now, Gen Z are those who are born between 1995 and 2010, okay? 60% will walk away from the church. Our current Gen Z population here in Australia is, is 4.6 million Gen Zs. So there's just under 26 million people, but 4.6 million of them are Gen Zs. So that's 2.76 million young people will walk away from the church, meaning they'll walk away or they won't regard the church. They're walking away from it. They're not walking to it. They're walking away. 2.76 million are going to walk away. Generation Alpha. Generation Alpha, those born between 2010 and 2025. So we've still got two years on this. But here's this. By the time they are seven years old, they would have spent one entire year in front of a screen. Now, you and I know what's happening with kids that are looking at screens. You and I know that even the schools are concerned about the children that are working remotely and looking at screens. So by the age of seven, they're going to spend one year in front of a screen. That's 3.6 hours in front of a screen average per day. But that's not the worst thing of it. Here's this. Generation Alpha, so the same generation, 43% will grow up without a dad. They'll grow up without a dad. And here's an even more scarier. Listen to this. Out of the 43%, 60% of those will be without a dad as a result of the growing propaganda of gender equality ideals. That's a reality. Here's this. Only 3% of teenagers right now, 3% of teenagers right now, we have 3.2 million teenagers, and I'm getting this information. You can look at, after, look at it yourself, Australian Institute of Health and Welfare Census, 2021. That's the latest one that there is. So out of 3.2 teenagers, million teenagers, only 3%, which is 96,000 teenagers, out of 3.2 million are reading the Bible. Scary. So do we need, as a church, do we need to be doing something? Yeah. Totally. I'm going to show you a video right now Andrew's going to put up. And it's from TikTok. So don't get offended, I'm sorry. But it's actually the reality of what's happening and what some of your kids are being told how to speak 
to your parents and parents that are actually adopting this because of this woke culture. Hey, non-binary offspring. Hey, non-gender specific parent. Uh, just wanted to let you know that dinner is ready, uh, if you consent to it, of course. Um, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't consent. Well, I was thinking maybe in an hour or so, if you're up to it, me and your other non-gender specific parent can sit in the living room and breathe for a little bit. <laughs> if, if it doesn't trigger you, of course. You know, I'm not sure if I'm triggered by that or offended. I, quite honestly, I, I don't know what to feel anymore. <laughs> Trust me, I don't know either, honey. Oh my God, did you just call me honey? Oh my God, I am so sorry. That's harassment. Please don't tweet about this. I already did. <laughs> well, it looks like my career is over. Well, maybe think 20 times before you talk. We'll have to live on the streets. Well, that doesn't matter to me because my feelings are more important than all of our physical well-beings. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna go into the living room and cry. Uh, I love you. You don't have to say it back. I'm not going to. Now, that's been put on uh, TikTok because it, they, people think it's funny. How sad is the state of our world? If you don't know Jesus is coming back, let me tell you, we as a church, we need to stand up. And the thing is, this woke culture is primarily going after our kids. That's what's happening. Now, I showed you that because I think sometimes we can hear about it, but when you actually see it in action, you can see how life is going to get chewed up with this false economy and this bondage, this culture that the enemy is using to entrap lives. And we as a church need to stand up. Now, I can tolerate some things, but what I will not tolerate is a culture coming after our kids. Especially when the Bible says one generation is going to praise the next generation. So if our kids aren't praising Jesus, the next generation ain't going to be praising Jesus. If you're not praising Jesus, your generation's not going to. If you're not serving God, your generation's not going to. So we as a church, and I feel so, uh, what's the word? And I know the pastors here and sitting in the front feel so burdened for our young people. And the reality is, is that we can have influence in there. We can have influence. The culture of our kids will know in this church, in this house, that they will know, won't be the woke culture, they're going to know the love of God, the grace of God, the fire of God, the hope of God, the peace of God, the Holy Spirit. That's what they're going to know. They're going to know. They're going to know. That's what they're going to know. Mate, it, it, let me tell you. Come on, church. This church is binary. We are a binary church. We believe that God made, made male and female. And he didn't make a mistake. Come on. But we've got to stand up. We've got to speak this into our kids, into our, into our toddlers, into our grow kids, into our youth. How dare this culture try and come and take our kids? No, no, no. And again, I say no. And center point, I'm going to ask you a question right now. And I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you to do what Dom asked you to do. And can I ask you, who's going to join the pastors? Who's going to join us? Who's going to stand up? Come on, who's going to stand up right now, stand up where you are and commit to raising up children in the ways that they should go so that their voice will be significant and they'll, their voice will bring a change? Will you stand up right now? Will you make a public declaration? All right, we've stood up twice. It feels like Catholic Church, doesn't it? But we don't have anything. You don't have to kneel down. That's between you and God. But come on, are you going to stand up? You're going to, come on, let's raise a hand this morning and, and we're going to stand. We're, we're, we're going to raise our hand and we're going to raise a standard. Not only our hand, but we're saying we're going to raise a standard in this church that we're going to do whatever we can from the toddlers to, to our grow kids to our youth to, to make room so that they can grow and have a voice and be supported. And maybe some of you need to grow a voice and be supported. And that's okay. We want to support that. But you're not going to do that on your own. Please be seated. Please be seated. Thank you. I want to right now just call the next generation up. Can I call those leaders up that are doing next gen? Can you guys come up? Come on, let's give them a round of applause. Come up here. These guys have decided. Some of them have been doing it. Just come up. Come up. Quickly. These guys have made decisions. Come on, if, you, if you're in the, the Grow Kids or, or youth this year, come up. 
as you can see, these beautiful people make decisions to stand up and, and to sow into these lives. We don't have enough. Come up. We need more. We need more of you. This is not enough to do what we need to do to make a difference in those kids. This year, God's brought to us families with children. And we want you to consider being a part of what this next gen is going to do. And I'm excited about it. Uh, as I keep telling you from time to time, Trisha and I uh, began in youth ministry and we, we cried when they removed us. Uh, but my heart is for young people because I know that Jesus called the young people. In the Old Testament, there were, there were men being called, boys being called from 7 and 8, girls being called from 9 and 10 to follow Jesus. And, and, and the best thing you can do is to sow into the young people. And right now, what I do want you to do is raise your hand towards these guys. Come on, let's raise our hand towards these guys and let's pray with them. Father God, we just pray for every person here on this stage. Lord, those that you're speaking to in the seats. Lord, those that will be coming. Lord, to join this amazing team that are dedicated their life this year in 2023 to speak into the lives of our toddlers into the lives of our grow kids, into the life of our youth. Father God, we know that you said, suffer the little children not to come to me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And Lord, I pray a blessing over each one. I pray an anointing over each one. We as a church pray an anointing over these young people that are now leading this next generation. So Father, I thank you. Continue to speak into the lives that are in the seats. Lord, Holy Spirit, speak to them even now. Lord, that they would come and be a part of what you would want them to be. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And, and maybe you're saying, how can I help? What can I do? Here's the thing. God speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. And it's not only his assignment. Come on, it's not his assignment. It's also my assignment. It's your assignment. It's the church's assignment. And you know what? Sometimes maybe we need to get into alignment for his assignment. Maybe your alignment is out. And maybe today the Holy Spirit's saying, come on, get back into alignment. Let's get back into the Word of God. Let's know that God has plans and purposes for you. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says this. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect the meeting together. Now, that doesn't mean on a Sunday. The meeting together is at any time. Don't neglect meeting together, as some people do. But encourage one another, especially, listen to that, especially now. Why? This present time. Why? That the day of his return is drawing near. Come on, he is drawing near. And what the writer to Hebrews is saying to us is, come on, let's think of ways to motivate one another. Come on, right now, the Holy Spirit's going to bring to you people that you know have been in church and are out of church. You know that there's people maybe that aren't in church that you uh, will motivate and go and see them. You can motivate, you can bring someone else. You can motivate someone, out, someone else for, for, for good works. And, and acts of love. Come on, these good works are the acts of love and loving someone. Remember that someone chased you, followed you up, brought you near, introduced you. Come on, go back to that and understand that this is the heart of God. That's what he wants us to do. Become part of a connect group. Find a tribe. It's important to do that. Start a connect group. It's okay. You can do that at a coffee shop where two or three are gathered. He's in the midst. Some people say, oh yeah, but I'll only have two or three. That's all you need to start a connect group, to start talking about the things of God. Come on, church, serve in a team. You might have been a part of this church for a few years now and you're not serving. Serve in a team. Ask God. Start somewhere. And people have said, oh, yeah, but I don't feel like I'm adequate. No, God will give you whatever you need. But he's looking for people to start. He's looking for people to start. Moses thought he wasn't adequate. Moses said, I can't speak. That's okay. We'll sort you out. We'll bring you Aaron to be a spokesperson. All you need to do is obey me. Just step in the water and bang, the seas are parting. Next gen team, we need grow kids leaders. We need united youth leaders. And this is a big one. We need a toddler's room. We need mums in toddler's rooms. You know how many young families have come in here and have 
walk straight out the door because they've had their children that need to be cared for. One of the best callings that you can have is to care for a little child so mum and dad can hear the word of God. And I believe that, you know what, this year in 2023, and as Peter preached last week, it's time for us to be comfortable with getting uncomfortable. It's time for us not just to sit. That's okay. You've been Mary's for a long time, some of you. It's time to be a Martha. It's time to be a Martha. Because some of the Marthas, it's time for them to sit. Some of them have been working really hard here. And it's time for them to be Mary's. If we're a body, we're going to help one another. And look, I'm seeing some hungry people here today. I'm seeing a church that saying, hey, we, we, want, to, we want to stand up. We, we want to support. We want to be a part. We want, to, we want to be able to sow. And there's ways you can do that. So I believe the Holy Spirit's speaking to us this year. Speaking to us this year. To know that we know that we're loved by God. And, and, and that's a big thing. But the other thing is, is, hey, to be a part and participate and serve in where God wants to take this church. You know what, in closing, and this is just a, a thought, just to get some clarity around church and church gatherings. Is that okay? A bit of a, a bit of Bible college here. And if you come to our Bible college, you'll probably learn more about this because I don't have time to speak about it now. But here's the thing. Do you know that church gatherings are not actually for unbelievers? Don't stone me yet. I've got scripture. Church gatherings are not for unbelievers. This is what St. Paul says in 14, 1 Corinthians 14, 24. He makes this statement, and I'm abbreviating it, but you can go and have a look. If an unbeliever enters or stumbles into a gathering, this is what you should do. Now, we don't have time to talk about what we should do. But, it, but he says, if an unbeliever. So what's that saying? It's saying that the church gathering was primarily for fellowship and equipping. You're here today to, to fellowship and equip. Why? We're there to get fellowship, equip ourselves, being saints of God, because that's what we are. We're saints of God. So that we can go out to the Monday and Saturday community and be the church. So we're here today, mate, to be Mary's. But Monday to Saturday, we're out to be Martha's. We're out to give what God's given us in our time of rest right now. And this is not the only time that you rest before God. But the reality is that the church gathering was primarily for the saints. So... What we've done as a modern church is we've taken our responsibility. So John, not John as the pastor, but John DeCecco as the Christian, as the child of God. We've taken the responsibility that's ours to evangelize the lost. And what we've done is we've turned it into an invitation for people to come and hear the pastor. But here's the thing. I want to challenge you in 2023. The next time you see or you have a new opportunity with a co-worker, with a friend or family, instead of inviting them to church. Now, what pastor says this? It's crazy. Instead of inviting them to church, will you invite them for a coffee? Will you invite them for a coffee? Will you actually open your house and invite them over for a meal? And, and let them get comfortable. Let them share their hearts so you can share the gospel. Let them sit on the table and let them pour out what's happening so that you can give them the love of God. Can I tell you? There'll be less pressure on them and less pressure on you because you're inviting them to your church, which is your house. And when you have them in your church, you have authority in your house. And that's what we need to do. You know what, Trish and I, when we came to Jesus, or before we did that, I don't even know when we came to Jesus. I'm, I'm asking my wife, am I still with Jesus? I don't even know right now. But it was eight months before we walked inside the church. But for eight months, we were taken out to dinner. We were taken out to coffees. We were actually sending some people a break because they were Bible college students. And they didn't have two cents to do a lot of things. But, mate, we took them to the most flower drum, mate. You know, even, even back then it was worth a lot of money. And they didn't eat for a week because they actually gave up their money to go to the flower drum to take us out. Coffees spent six months in Pastor Rob's uh, mum and dad's place doing Connect. Doing more eating than Connecting. But there was a hosting spirit. And that hosting spirit touched Trish and I, and we wanted to be part of that full time. What's happening Monday? What's happening Tuesday? 
Oh, is there a relationship seminar? Oh, is there a connect group? Oh, is, are we at this person's house talking about sex? You know, what does God think about that? So what happens is, is that people formed beautiful, loving, godly relationships with us because they gave us the gospel. They told us we needed Jesus. And then we followed them to church. Your lost friend is not the pastor's responsibility. Your lost co-worker is not the responsibility of the church. God's placed you in their path. And it's for a reason. And I'm saying this year in 2023, don't miss the opportunity of being in a person's life. Can we stand up this morning? I thank you for being so patient. I really appreciate you being here this morning. But as a church, we don't want to be deceived. And as individuals, I certainly don't want to. The reality is, is that God loves you. And you need to know that you're loved by God. If that's settled in your life, that's amazing. But can we have every eye closed, please? If, if you're in the house, maybe you're here for the first time. Or maybe you're here for a long time. And, and you don't know that you know that you know that God loves you. Can I get you to raise your hand? No, don't be embarrassed. Thank you so much. Don't, thank you so much. Don't be embarrassed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Father God, all those that have raised their hand today, Lord, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will just speak love and life into their lives, knowing that you died on the cross, knowing that you would have come just for them. Jesus, you came to show them God's love. And I want you to receive that. I want you to say, I receive that. Come on, let's say it as a church. I receive that today. I receive your love. I receive your life today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And just before we close today, maybe there's people here today that you know you're out of alignment for the assignment that God has for you. And you know what? It's just simple as saying, Lord, I return to my assignment. I return to my assignment. I return to my assignment. And you know who you are. And this morning, my prayer is as a church that we together will align our lives to the assignment and the Word of God. So that in 2023, these, this generation that we spoke about, that we will play a part. Some of it must, might be financially. Some of us, it might be time. Others, it might be our talent. Others, it might be joining that team. Whatever it is, God's got a part for you to play. God's got a part for you to play. Do you know what? When you're getting my age, if you don't have young people in the church, and this is not the reason why we should sow in, but if we don't have young people in the church, you know what? We grow old very quickly. The reality is, is we want to see young people up here. We want to see young people uh, in our youth and winning their young people, their friends, their cousins. We want to see this church buzzing with babies. Come on. But you know what? I'll tell you, God will only do that if there are hearts that are willing to take them on. And as I shared with you today, the world is pretty crazy. And if church, if Center Point Church, if we're not going to stand up, come on, don't look at any other church. If we're not going to stand up, who is? And this morning, my prayer for you right now is as you've raised your hand, Father God, I thank you for each person this morning that's here. Lord, all of us raised our hands. And Lord, that's the desire of our heart. But Lord, we now ask that you give that desire commitment. Father, that we would commit to the ways. Lord, that we would this week, that we would uh, speak about what we've heard today. Those figures are horrific. Lord, and we know that, Lord, your return is imminent. But, Lord, one more. Father, one more family. Lord, one more friend, one more co-worker. Lord, one more person we can bring with us. Because you said that you don't want anyone to not come. You don't want anyone to not come. You died for all. So, Father, I thank you for the beautiful families. I thank you for the lovely individuals, the children, God. Lord, the team that we have here, the pastors, not only here in Melton. Father, what you're going to do there. And Father, what you're doing in the Philippines, even right now as we speak. We just love that you love us. But Lord, we want to be good stewards. 
We want to be sons and daughters that Lord herald our Father and His love and His beauty and His mercy and His grace. Father God, we thank You today. We ask for a blessing. And Lord, that we would have a week of opportunity. And Lord, that we'd have people testifying. Lord, that yes, they were invited someone for a coffee. And yes, someone received Jesus. And yes, someone in their home was touched because of the love that was given to them. Lord, these are the stories. This is the witness. This is what we do as ambassadors of Jesus. So Father, I bless you. I give you the praise and honor. And everybody said, amen, amen. Have a great week. Thank you for coming. Remember next week. Gary Hurrigan's here. Invite your friends. Thank you so much.